Hello, Chris from ePianos here. I've got the Yamaha P125 and the Yamaha DGX670 here. Now, these two pianos are compared a lot by people because they're in a similar price bracket, but there are some really important differences between them, and I'm going to explain what those big differences are for you today. Hopefully, it'll help you decide which piano is the right one for you. If this video is helpful for you, please do us a favor and press the thumbs up icon below this video. It really helps us get seen here on YouTube. And make sure you check out the ePianos website for the latest deals and offers on these two pianos and our huge selection of pre-owned digital pianos and keyboards too. Now let's do a really basic summary to start with on these two pianos, shall we? Um, P125 is a wonderfully simple piano that is authentic to play. The DGX670 is a wonderfully complex and in-depth piano that is authentic to play. Now in a slightly more detailed summary for you, P125 is designed to be an uncomplicated yet realistic feeling and sounding piano that is portable. You can pick it up easily, carry it around. The DGX670, as well as offering all of those things, is a surprisingly comprehensive workstation for learning to play, for writing and composing music, for performing live, and recording as well. Uh, since we're doing summaries at the start, I may as well tell you which one I think you should buy. If you want a basic piano that feels and sounds like a traditional piano um, that is relatively portable, and that's all you're interested in, P125 is going to be the right choice for you. If you want all of those things and you like to create music and you like to perform music live, including singing, and you want a machine that can actually help you learn to play, then DGX670 is going to be the right choice for you. Now, a quick note on the things that both models have, because there's quite a lot that is similar between these two models. They both have 88 keys, which is the standard length of a traditional piano, and they are both weighted to the touch, so they will feel like a traditional piano to play. And for you spec lovers out there, it's the Yamaha GHS, the graded hammer standard system that they both use. Both of these models give you a highly realistic and authentic piano sound. Uh, for example, P125 on its basic settings, and DGX670 on its basic settings. So both really great piano sounds. Both of these models allow you to play while wearing headphones. Both models have metronomes built in. Both models come with music rests that slot in the top. I haven't got them on here at the moment. Uh, manuals in the box and power adapters and sustain pedals as well. They both come with the same type of sustain pedal in the box, which is the little square one that you're looking at now. Neither of these models comes with its own stand. They're both flat underneath, so you can put them easily on a tabletop uh, in an office or studio or wherever, um, but they do have their own stand options wooden stands, which you can see a picture of here, that they actually screw into. So they're nice and um, sturdy and turns them into a rather nice looking bit of furniture. Uh, but there are also collapsible stands as well. And we recommend the double braced X stands that you can see here. Uh, now they're very useful because of course they're portable. They will fold up flat and go in the back of a vehicle for transporting them and going out and playing live. Additional three pedal units are available for both of these models, but bear in mind that to fit those you are required to have the wooden stand for both of these models because it attaches to the horizontal bar at the back. Now let's get into the main differences between these two pianos and I'm going to start with the voices. Now what I mean by voices is the sounds that are built into these pianos. They both, as you've heard, have a piano sound, but there are extra voices like strings and uh, electric pianos and things like that. There's a major difference. P125 has 24 voices. 
The basics are covered, pianos, there's a few variations of it, strings, um, bass guitar, they're all on there. DGX670 has 601 voices. So 24 on P125 versus 601 voices on DGX670. So you're going to get extra pianos and variations of it, um, extra strings and orchestra sounds, brass and woodwind, choirs, percussion, synth, pads, 601 of them in DGX670. And they're not just there to tinker with, by the way. A very important thing to know is that the accompaniments and the backing music that I'll get into later um, draws on that large selection of voices. So it means if you want to play something in the style of country music, the, the appropriate type of guitar and the appropriate type of strings can be chosen. If you want to play dance music, you get the right type of synth pads and synth lead sounds. Uh, pop music gives you the right type of guitar or uh, electric piano. The more voices you've got on there, the better the accompaniments, but also for creating music, you've got a wider palette of sounds and voices to choose from. So P125, uh, we turn it on and we get the Yamaha Concert Grand Piano. And you get a few variations of it as well. For example, a slightly mellower sounding piano. A brighter sounding piano there as well. But you can do things, albeit it's quite a limited selection, you can still do things like play piano and strings at the same time for this sort of cinematic effect. So I'm not going into much detail with the voices, but there's only 24 in there. With DGX 670, um, when I open up the screen menu here, I'm, I suddenly have a whole selection of extra voices, the piano that you've heard. A gazillion variations of it as well, including some really nice ones with the different type of EQ on there. But to give you something uh, quite varied compared to P125, the concert guitar is a really nice one. And can you hear the, the string slides and the buzzes that you get from the fretboard of the guitar? It's things like that that um, allow you to have that in the accompaniment and get a really authentic style of music uh, backing you. semi-acoustic guitar for jazz playing like that and you get loads of string variations uh, the concert strings on their own are great and you get several variations studio strings A strings pad, a little bit synth-like. Uh, and then you get the synths themselves, and there's a massive selection of these as well. The lead ones. But you get into the pads and you get all sorts of great um, uh, 80 sounding pads like this. which you can combine very easily with something like the, the piano, or that nice ambient piano with the echo. A 
and that's the type of thing you can really lose yourself in playing. So there's a big difference in the selection of voices on these two instruments. The next section where there's a major difference between these two is the automatic accompaniments. Um, now that's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it, saying automatic accompaniment. So I'm going to, rather than say automatic accompaniments, say backings or styles. Um, on the P125, it's very, very basic. You do have some drums that will play along with you, and you have some rhythm, um, some bass that will join in as well, but it's quite simple. In fact, it's only 20 rhythms you get. I'll give you an example. So we turn it on the main piano and press the rhythm button. Okay, so you can hear the bass joining in a little bit, but it's very, very simple. Now, on the DGX 670, we have 263 uh, variations of backing styles, whether you want to play uh, pop, rock, country, um, jazz, dance, R&B, just about everything. If you're not familiar with this, the way it works is you, you tell the keyboard what genre of music you want to play to start with, and then it will um, give you the appropriate type of backing. It detects what you're playing with the, in the notes um, and will give you the, uh, the appropriate type of backing. I'll give you an example. So here is a um, funk rock pop one. And can you hear how rather than just bass and drums, we're now getting uh, guitar in there a different type of drum kit altogether, uh, some bass as well, and it sounds like there's some synth in there too. And I've got the ability to put in extra drum fills as well, and introductions and endings. Um, so you can actually put together a pretty polished live performance. I might choose a, an introduction like this. A bit like Maroon 5 this one, isn't it? It's playing the intro by itself. And now this is where I come in. and it will play an outro for me as well. So I can control what's going on with the accompaniment as well, so I can put together a professional performance from start to finish. P125, by comparison, you just can't do that. Really, the beats that are in this one are really more of a timing aid than anything. It's useful to have to practice with, but it's not a patch on the, um, what was it, 263 variations. Uh, that was just a pop one, but, we could be a ballad. I'll choose a ballad here. Okay, you can hear strings starting to come in and a synth as well. It's like I'm playing with the whole orchestra. Um, it's something more dance-like. Okay, and let's see what else. And then to change completely the direction into a different genre, uh, jazz.
So as you can see, most genres of music are catered for on DGX, and as you'd expect, over 200 styles of music, um, so plenty of variations. P125, when it comes to backing music accompaniment, very, very simple, very basic, but quite fun. The next section is about how you actually control these keyboards. Um, P125 uh, necessarily, because of its compact design, as you can see on the front, only has a few buttons on there, and the basic ones are for changing the voice, changing the volume, um, and recording. But when you go to do the extra things in here, like changing the speed of the rhythm or the metronome or loading up some of the pre-built songs, you end up having to do some uh, rather clumsy button combinations. Uh, there is a guide, printed guide, that comes in the manual, but it's quite difficult to press the right one and find it, and you have to refer to the manual. It's a, it's a bit of a pain to do. And it's, as I mentioned, necessary because the design is supposed to be sleek and compact and um, complicated. It's worth noting that um, you can use Yamaha's companion app called Yamaha Smart Pianist on your, your tablet or your smartphone to control all of those things, but you do need a cable to plug it in with. Uh, see our video on the Smart Pianist app, by the way, it's very, very good. The DGX670, by comparison, as well as having extra buttons on the front, the, because the panel is larger, has also got a 4.3-inch LCD colour screen on it, which, of course, presents all the information to you and makes it much easier to keep on top of what you're doing and how you're controlling the keyboard. It's nice and bright and clear. Bear in mind it is not touch screen, but the buttons that you control it with around the screen, including the data entry wheel, uh, do make it very easy to navigate your way around. So the next section to compare these two pianos on is recording, um, which if you're learning to play, has a real practical purpose because you or your teacher can <clears throat> record left and right hand separately on both of these pianos and then practice the opposite hand while you're hearing the other hand back um, and then eventually you aim to play them both together of course. So a DG, um, P125 has a two track recorder which means you can do your left hand and your right hand um, and then practice them independently but you can as well record both hands at the same time by the way so if you're composing music you can use track one to play with both hands and use track two to play with both hands and have them both play back together at the same time, even using one of the different voices too. DGX670, by comparison, offers way more in terms of recording. In fact, you have a 16-track recording studio built into it. If you want to write songs, if you want to write music, to have 16 tracks that you can layer up plus the 601 voices that you can choose from on here gives you quite an enormous palette of creative possibilities at your fingertips, it really does. As well as um, creating your own music from scratch, you can use um, some of the rhythms and accompaniment templates that I was playing earlier on. Uh, for example, if you're writing a pop song, you could choose one of the pop backings, take everything out of it apart from the drums and the bass pattern, and then just write your parts on top. So the end result will be you've got a song that sounds just like your own creation rather than something that's uh, uh, kind of copying what's on the keyboard. So there's really useful ways that you can use the accompaniment styles in here too when writing music. Or indeed you could just write your 16 track piece of music from the ground up completely by scratch, note by note by yourself. And of course the colour screen on here makes this operation much much easier as well. Now an important distinction when it comes to taking your recordings from the pianos and putting them on a computer between these two is DGX670 does make it easier because you not only have the screen on the front to be able to manage your files and see where everything is, but you can plug in a USB stick and transfer files to a computer with one of those. Um, with P125, there's no display for you to see the files that you're playing with and you have to use a cable, USB to host cable, to transfer your recorded songs from it onto a computer, which isn't the end of the world by any stretch, but it's just a little bit more convenient to manage and transfer files on the 670. 
Now the next section is connectivity, um, things that you can plug into the keyboards um, with wires or wirelessly. Now the 670 again has the upper hand here in my opinion because while you can use Yamaha's Smart Pianist app to play music from your device through the speakers of P125, you still require a cable to do it. But DGX 670 has Bluetooth built in so you can take out your device your smartphone or tablet and play music, pair them up and then play music through the onboard speakers very, very easily. And for singers, people that want to go out and sing and perform live, 670 has got a quarter inch jack microphone input. So I could sit here with the microphone and sing, perform live, which I'm not going to by the way, and my voice would come out of the speakers. I can also add vocal effects like echo, reverb, etc., as well to give a polished live performance. You may be able to tell that's what 670 is all about. P125 doesn't have an extra input in there, so if you want to sing and play live, you're going to have to have an extra device, an amplifier, a speaker or something to sing through. The next section is tutorial functions and how these pianos will teach you to play or help you learn to play. And uh, I mentioned the recording facilities on P125 earlier on. I should also mention there are 50 pieces of recorded classical music built into this piano. Um, it's one of those ones where you have to use a key combination to load them up, but you can play them back through the speakers and take away the left or the right hand part and learn the opposite hand or indeed just listen to them and follow the music. DGX 670 with its screen on the front, its LCD screen uh, color screen makes the learning experience um, completely different. It takes it to a much higher level. You've got a hundred songs built into it as well of various genres that you can load up to play, not only to listen to and to learn the left and right hand parts, but you can also get the notation to appear on the screen and learn to play it. So quite a different experience to the P125, which is quite simple. There's even technology in there where if you're learning to play notes from sheet music on the screen, it will stop the music and wait for you to play the correct note before it moves on. It's a really handy little feature, that one, and helps just push you along a little bit when you're learning to read music. And you're not limited to the 100 songs that are built in. Indeed, you can download um, almost any MIDI song from the internet if you wanted to learn a particular song. Put it in here via USB stick and the notes will appear on the music on the screen. So you can learn to play almost any song that you wanted. It's easy to, to plug it in and go. So in case you missed it at the start, um, which piano do I think you should buy? Well, if you want a authentic feeling and sounding piano that is compact, uncomplicated, portable, P125 is obviously the right choice for you. If you want all of those things, plus you like a bit of technology, and you want to perform live, and you want to record music, create music, and you'd like a machine that sort of teaches you to play too, then DGX 670 is gonna give you all of those things. So I hope that's helped you make the right choice between these two pianos. If this has been helpful, please do us a favor and press the thumbs up icon at the bottom of this video. It really helps us get seen here on YouTube. And make sure you check out the ePianos website for the latest deals and offers on both of these pianos and more. And our huge selection of pre-owned instruments as well. Often it will save you quite a lot of money having a pre-owned one. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below this video and we'll get right back to you. Or just come onto our website and you can chat to us during opening hours uh, instantly. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.